As the sun sets in San Saba, most creatures on John and Gemma Bird's pecan orchard begin to settle in for the night. Yet the fading light signals the start of a feeding frenzy for thousands of the orchard's nocturnal residents. It's here where the birds have found another way to grow organic pecans. The spray is very expensive and uh, you can keep doing stuff to pecans to the point where you're not going to, you're spending more than you're making on them and so you have to, you have to look at how much you're getting, getting out of whatever your inputs are. One way he is reducing cost is by letting the more than 20,000 bats that call his 100 acre property home do the work for him. You can build a bat house for a few hundred dollars and it gonna it lasts for a long time and the, the bats are there every night working for you. There's not a lot of input in that after you first build the house. It can help. We see a huge diversity of insects. Liz Braun de Torres is a doctoral student at Boston University. Every summer finds her here in Texas studying how the bats are impacting pecan orchards just like this one. Liz has found seven species in the orchard and five of those eat the pecan nutcase bearer moth number one enemy of Texas pecan growers. Some of the things that we've been doing is we've been monitoring the bat houses for the number of bats that are in there and we use thermal imaging to do that um, to take counts on those and how um, that colony size changes throughout the summer in relation to um, pest abundances. Liz and research assistant Kristen Lear also use large nets to capture the bats to collect DNA as well as determine the size and sex of various species. When the sun goes down and the dinner bell rings, thousands of bats depart in search of insects. Liz uses acoustic technology to analyze the sounds each individual bat makes to record location and species data. The results show that bats are acting as a natural pesticide by eating up to their body weight in insects every night. That may not sound like much considering the most common bat in Texas, the Mexican free-tailed, is only half an ounce. But with 20,000 bats on the hunt, the impact is clear. Studies show the furry flyer saved South Texas cotton growers more than $700,000 a year by avoiding the need to spray pesticides. I don't think that building bat houses should be limited to organic agriculture. Um, conventional growers could definitely benefit from the bats being around um, as kind of a, a supplement to um, the management practices that they're using. The research and data collecting is ongoing, but it's becoming clear that Texas farmers have a few allies in the night sky. For TFB News, Nathan Smith, San Saba.